This presentation is how to ergonomically work from home. I'm Celeste McLaughlin, Ergonomics Manager at Solutions Northwest. We serve Western Washington, Western Oregon, Southern California, and we are able to consult anywhere virtually. The goal of this presentation is to teach you how to work ergonomically at home. Ergonomics is making sure your joints are in good posture, and you are working in neutral posture. Each of your joints, such as your shoulders, elbows, wrists, and hips, needs to be in neutral posture. And that's the focus of this presentation. Looking at this picture, you will see examples of neutral posture when the body is sitting, standing, and moving. Again, the goal of ergonomics is for the joints and the body to be in neutral posture. Neutral posture is the position which places the least stress on the body. This makes cumulative trauma injuries less likely to occur. Cumulative trauma injuries occur in the muscles, tendons, bones, blood vessels, fascia, and nerves. Unlike acute injuries such as a broken bone, they can take a while to develop symptoms. These are some common issues that we hear. The chair is not comfortable, or it's too high or too low. Work surfaces are not at the correct height. The monitor is a laptop and it hurts my neck. I need to stand and change my posture. How do I do that? My wrist hurts from poor posture on the mouse. I need less distractions and noise. And these are just a few issues. Here are some useful suggestions. We recommend switching positions frequently, moving, taking mini breaks every 20 minutes. If sitting at a desk or table in a chair while using a laptop, raise the monitor and plug in an external keyboard and mouse. Get the elbows a bit higher than the surface of the table or desk by raising the chair or sitting on flat pillows, folded towels, or folded blankets. To raise the laptop monitor, you can use books, reams of paper, boxes, a wastebasket, or a laptop stand if the employee wants to purchase one. If the chair armrests are hard, you can use towels or something soft on the armrests. If the chair has a hard backrest or is too deep, you can use a pillow for back support. If someone is sitting on the sofa using the laptop, you can use a pillow under the laptop or the employee can purchase a lap desk. If the legs are dangling, use a box or books or footrest. If you need to stand, you can stack books and boxes on the kitchen counter for the laptop and put an ironing board in front of the kitchen counter for the keyboard and mouse. Or if that ironing board won't get high enough or you don't have an ironing board, you can also put books, boxes, things under the keyboard and the mouse instead. Here's a typical example of someone working from home at a dining table. The neck is strained to look at the low laptop screen and the table is too high. This causes a slumped over posture. The table is too high and the screen is too low. And as a result, it is causing wrist arm compression neck flexion, and a C-curve in the spine. This can cause pain in the neck, upper back, wrists, forearms, shoulder blades, and mid-back. Maybe this will not cause pain immediately, but it will eventually. So take a look at this picture, because on the following slide there will be the fix. What we did here is we placed a cushion on the chair and used an upside-down wastebasket to get the laptop up. We added an external keyboard. In this scenario, he already had a mouse. If he didn't, then one would need to be added. Looks better, huh? I'm going to start discussing equipment now. And links to any of the equipment discussed in this presentation are going to be in the video description box. So if you're interested in learning more about them, purchasing, that's where you'll find the links. A keyboard and a mouse are two inexpensive things to hook up, so you can use your laptop as a monitor. 
Microsoft makes a good keyboard and mouse, which are inexpensive. Those are good choices. If you're having wrist, arm, or shoulder pain, you may want to consider an ergonomic keyboard or mouse or a trackball. The Anchor Mouse is a moderately priced vertical mouse. Vertical mouse is also called a handshake mouse. It will put your arm and wrist in a more neutral position than a regular mouse. A mouse gives you more control than a trackball, especially if you're doing spreadsheets. The trade-off is that you'll be using your shoulder, wrist, and elbow more with a mouse than a trackball. If you're used to using an ergonomic keyboard, or right now you're experiencing wrist pain when keying, then an ergonomic keyboard is a good idea. The Microsoft ergonomic keyboard is a good one. It's moderately priced. The Kinesis Freestyle 2 is a good option for a true split keyboard. That one's more expensive, but it does have a superior build quality to a lot of other keyboards on the market, and that split angle can be adjusted. If your dominant wrist or arm is giving you pain, a trackball can be used on the opposite side. So if you're right-handed, you can use it on the left. The clicker settings can be changed in the settings on your computer. If you do a lot of scrolling with the mouse, the Kensington Orbit with scroll ring is a good trackball. There are two versions. You want the one with the blue ball and the scroll ring. The Logitech Marble Mouse places the hand in more of a neutral handshake position. And that one can be used if you don't do a lot of scrolling with your mouse. The top edge of your monitor should ideally be at your eye level, unless you're wearing a special type of glasses. Since a laptop is not that tall, it will need to be raised if it's being used as a monitor. You can use books, boxes, reams of paper. Those will all work for raising the laptop to be used as a monitor. If you want something fancier, a laptop stand can be used. Here's an example of a laptop stand. There are a lot of different versions. Basically what you want is something sturdy, lightweight, with an adjustable angle. Here's a few listed that we're familiar with and recommend. There's the Adada aluminum stand, the Onyx laptop mesh stand, and the Contour Design laptop stand. You always want to check the specifications of a stand before buying one to make sure it can accommodate the size of your laptop. If you're sitting on a hard seat, it's important to have cushioning. You may also need to sit on additional cushioning in order to bring your elbows up to the correct height for the table. Your forearm should be parallel to the keying surface. You can use folded towels, blankets, or a flat pillow to sit on. A foam wedge could also be used. If you are viewing documents while typing, a document holder is an important piece of equipment to have. A document holder is best used directly in front of you between the keyboard and monitor. The one pictured is the ViewWrite MemoScape document holder. There are different models of document holders. This is just one example. For short durations of time, it's fine to use a laptop while sitting on a sofa or bed. A pillow can be used under the laptop. If you want something better, a laptop desk can be used. If you're standing while working at home, you may need to be creative. You can use the ironing board either on the floor, the bed, the countertop, or table. It just depends on how tall you are. Some people may be fine with using this on the floor. You want the top of that ironing table surface to be a half inch to an inch below your standing elbow height. Standing elbow height is measured when the arms are bent at a right angle from the floor to the bottom of the elbow. So basically, you just want that surface to be half an inch to an inch lower than your forearms when your forearms are bent at a right angle to the floor. You want to do this kind of thing for shorter durations. Uh, obviously, a keyboard and a laptop stand wouldn't fit on an ironing board. If you plan on standing a lot of the time, you can set up a workstation on the counter by placing books or boxes into the laptop monitor and attaching a keyboard and mouse. That keyboard and mouse can be, again, it can be on that ironing board in front of the counter, or maybe you need something taller than that, 
and you place boxes or books or something under your keyboard and under your mouse. If you plan on standing a lot of the time at home, you can also invest in a sit stand laptop stand. So you can simply raise and lower it. So you're sitting, you can raise it for standing. One caveat to that though, is that a lot of those laptop stands may not raise tall enough for some people. So if you're really tall, that probably wouldn't work. This is a creative solution to a common problem. The picture on the left shows the desk is too high and she is too close to the monitor. To fix this situation, a board was placed on the drawer, which is pulled out to create a lower keyboard surface. So you see the fix on the right picture. Distractions and noise are some common issues while working from home. It's helpful to create a designated workspace in your home. Playing music may help you concentrate. Let family know your work hours and when you will be available to help them. If you're lucky enough to have a door to the room you're working in, you can institute a door open or close policy where family members are allowed to come in and talk to you when the door is open. We hope that you found this presentation helpful and that you are able to make your home office more ergonomic. Our contact information is on the bottom of the slide. Feel free to contact us. Thank you.